Now here I have DJI's latest mini drone. This is the Mini 3, and if that name or number sounds familiar, DJI just recently released this one right here, the DJI Mini 3 Pro. So if you guys are familiar with my channel, then you'll know I did a full in-depth review on the Mini 3 Pro, as well as a bunch of other separate videos going through all of its features. Now if we were to line these up with the mini drones that DJI does offer, we now have the Mini 2 right here. Sitting in the middle, we do have the new Mini 3, and of course, like I talked about, the Mini 3 Pro. As far as design goes, it does look very similar to the Mini 3 Pro, but when it comes down to video, video specs, very similar to what we have here on the Mini 2. Of course, we do have a better camera now on that Mini 3. And for the past couple weeks, I've been doing a bunch of videos and comparisons with the Mini 3 compared to these drones right here. So in this video, let's go through all the things you're gonna wanna know about the Mini 3. And if you guys do like this type of content, I am gonna have separate videos talking a little bit more about the Mini 2 versus the Mini 3, as well as the Mini 3 versus the Mini 3 Pro. And before we get into the specs and the comparisons with this new drone, let's first talk about the price. DJI will be releasing this drone by itself for $469, this will all be USD. So if you previously have a remote control or another drone from DJI, and you have a remote control such as the RCN1, which is this one right here, or you have the DJI RC, you will be able to pair it up with the new DJI Mini 3. Now, if you don't have a remote control and you wanna get the bare minimum, of course, you're gonna need a remote control to pilot the drone. For $559, you'll be able to get the Mini 3 as well as this remote control right here, which is the DJI RCN1. With this remote control, you are gonna be using something like a mobile phone, your mobile device to hook up to it. It does not come with a screen. So right now, I just have my phone hooked up to the top here, and that's how you'll be able to see all of your video feed from the camera. And for $699, you'll be able to get this combo right here, which is the Mini 3 and the DJI RC. This is the one I normally would recommend because it just has the screen built into it. You don't have to worry about using or having to use your mobile phone every time you wanna fly. DJI is also releasing Fly More kits for both remote control sets. So if you wanted the Fly More kit, with the RCN1 remote control, it'll be $718. That'll also come with two extra batteries, the battery hub, as well as a case. And for $858, you're able to get the same accessories with the Flymore combo, and that will be with the DJI RC. Now when it comes to size and weight, as you can see, it is slightly bigger than the Mini 2. So if you guys haven't seen the Mini 3 Pro yet, uh, you might not know it is a little bit bigger than the Mini 2. But when it comes to the body of the Mini 3 Pro, very, very similar in sizes, but the Mini 3 is slightly, slightly, slightly bigger because they actually took a design from Mini 2. They brought back the legs, these legs right here, on one of the arms, on the front arms. You can see there's no legs here on the Mini 3 Pro, but we do have it there on the new Mini 3. And I'm confirming with DJI right now as far as it just being, is it a landing uh, extension or if they're brought the antenna down into the legs. Uh, so I will be getting more information about that. And of course, I'll be putting that information here on screen. But the addition of those legs does bring the size of the Mini 3 a little bit taller when you're standing it up this way. There is two separate batteries, just like we have on the Mini 3 Pro that you can get. The one battery here is a shorter flight time, but it does keep you under that 249 gram mark. With the smaller capacity battery, we are at, as far as my scale goes, 246 grams. 247 grams. So that is with the lower capacity battery. And also going back to the Mini 2 Super Light, 238 grams. Now switching out the battery to the higher capacity, longer flight time battery. Let's uh, weigh this one. This is the Mini 3. This comes up to 286 grams on the Mini 3. You are gonna be going over that 250 gram threshold uh, if you are using the higher capacity, larger battery. Next, let's talk about, of course, the most important thing, and that is video quality. Now, of course, when I saw the camera, it looks just like the Mini 3 Pro, so I pretty much thought it'd be exactly the same. And if you were to look at the footage individually, very hard to tell, but there's definitely some updates here on the Mini 3. Right out of the box, the Mini 3 will be shooting 4K, but not just 4K, it will be shooting 4K in HDR. Now we also have HDR on the Mini 3 Pro. It is also in 4K 30, so that is a feature that the Mini 3 Pro does have. Now one thing that did surprise me is that when I did do a little sunset flight with the Mini 3 at the exact same time with the Air 2S, the footage of those two drones actually look very, very similar, and there's actually some parts of it that actually look better on the Mini 3. 
Now, of course, I'm not saying that this camera is better than the Air 2S, but I think with that dual native ISO chip that the Mini 3 has, it's definitely doing something in camera that's really helping in those low light scenarios. Next, we'll jump over to sensor size on the cameras, and we do have the same sensor size on the Mini 3s. We have the one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor. We're here on the Mini 2, we have a little bit smaller of a sensor, a one over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor. Now when it comes to aperture, we do have a fixed 2.8 on the Mini 2, on the Mini 3, as well as the Mini 3 Pro, we are at fixed 1.7. Having a larger aperture compared to the Mini 2 will definitely help in lower light scenarios. Now like I talked about earlier, there are two separate batteries, one with a larger capacity for longer flight time. DJI is rating the Mini 3 to fly approximately 38 minutes with the lower capacity battery. And if you wanted to get the higher capacity one, you could fly up to 51 minutes. Now, one question I had for DJI, of course, was the drones are the same size, the batteries are the same. How are they able to achieve more flight time on the Mini 3? And they mentioned that you're able to preserve a little bit more power consumption on the Mini 3 because we don't have the computing process of things like A-Pass, the obstacle avoidance, as well as the focus track that we do have here on the Mini 3 Pro. I did do a full side-by-side -side hover test on these three drones right here. If you guys wanna see that video, make sure to check the link above as well as down below in the video description. When it comes to transmission or that connection between your remote control and your drone, the one thing I did notice on the Mini 3 is that they're still using the O2 or OcuSync two technologies. So as far as distance wide, it is rated for 10 kilometers, the exact same as what we have here on the Mini 2. If you're looking for just a little bit more range, the Mini 3 Pro uses O3 technology capable of up to 12 kilometers in transmission. When I was out there doing the test on the Mini 3 and flying against these, I didn't really see too much of a difference as far as transmission goes, as far as any breakups or anything like that. If you've ever flown a Mini 3 Pro before, uh, the transmission feels pretty similar, just about the same on the Mini 3. For those coming from the Mini 2, you can actually just tell by the way the drone flies, the angle of the props are actually at a slant, the longer propellers compared to the Mini 2. So you do have that softer tone as far as the sound goes up in the air between these two drones. When it comes to video resolution, we are at 4K 30 frames a second. I was kind of bummed with that. I thought they'd at least bring over the same video resolution as the Mini 3 Pro, but we are here at 4K 30 frames a second, also 2.7 at 60, 1080p at 60. Now when it comes to obstacle avoidance or obstacle sensing sensors, as you can see here, we actually don't have those on the Mini 3 like we do here on the Mini 3 Pro. On the front of the Mini 3, what may look like sensors are actually just little vents, very similar to what we have here on the Mini 2. The only sensors we have on these two drones, the Mini 2 and the Mini 3, are these bottom sensors right there. These sensors, of course, help you with takeoff and landing. And because we don't have those sensors on the Mini 3 like we do on the Mini 3 Pro, you don't have those other intelligent modes like follow me, active track, point of interest, spotlight. You don't have those focus track options on the Mini 3. And because we don't have those sensors, we also don't have things like A-Pass. So if you are out there flying and you're used to flying with A-Pass on, where you're able to then turn A-Pass on and have the drone either go around an object. So if you're coming up on a building or a tree or a light post or anything like that and it were to sense it, you could tell the drone, I want you to go around it or I want you to break at that subject. Now, even though we don't have the intelligent flight modes like we have here on the Mini 3 Pro, we do have the standard ones that DJI always includes. We do have quick shots on the Mini 3. With a press of a button, the drone will be able to perform some dynamic movements, quick shots like Droney, Helix, Rocket, Circle, as well as Boomerang. The one difference here on the Mini 3 Pro is that they have the same quick shots, but they also have Asteroid on this drone. I'm not sure why we are not able to have Asteroid on the Mini 3 or even on the Mini 2, uh, but we do have Asteroid uh, on the Mini 3 Pro. We don't have that on the Mini 3. 
Jumping back to the video settings on the Mini 3, we only have a normal color profile. We also have only a normal color profile on the Mini 2. If you wanted something like a flatter color profile that gives you a little bit more range when you're doing some post-processing, you do have D-Cine-like on the Mini 3 Pro. The Mini 3 does have that vertical shooting option, so if you are the type to post a lot of things to Instagram Reels, TikTok, or YouTube Stories, you are able to shoot in vertical mode on the Mini 3. Having the ability to turn that camera vertical gives you the ability to use the full sensor in vertical mode, so you are able to get a higher resolution out of a true vertical shot with the Mini 3. The one thing that's great about the Mini 3 is that out of the box, the vertical shooting will be working with quick shots. So if you want to do quick shots and all the quick shots they do have to offer, you are able to do that with the Mini 3 in vertical mode. When it comes to digital zoom, we actually have the same digital zoom that we have on these other drones here. If you're in 4K, you are able to digitally zoom in two times. If you're in 2.7, you can go in three times. 1080p, you can zoom in four times, but it all is still digital zoom with these drones. Now, as far as wind resistance, these are all level five rated for wind resistance. The one difference you'll hear, if you are coming from something like the Mini 2, the sound of the Mini 3 is a lot softer than the Mini 2. Now, besides vertical shooting on the Mini 3, the one advantage that this whole new design has over something like the Mini 2 is the ability to tilt that camera up 60 degrees. Having that option and that perspective is definitely a nice feature because if you've ever flown the Mini 2, this is something that the gimbal always has an issue with. Not only pointing up, because the Mini 2 only points up at about a 20 degree angle. The one thing the Mini 2 did suffer from was that if you were pointing straight down and you were going faster like in sport mode and you were to just throttle forward, the gimbal would twitch. So you don't see that on the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro. That is something that you will pretty much always see on the Mini 2. Now as far as shooting options on all these drones, they're actually all the same. You can either shoot in single photo, you can shoot in auto exposure bracketing, you can do time photos, and as far as some smart photos goes, you can actually shoot sphere, 180 as well as wide angle on all of these drones. The one difference with these two drones is that you are able to turn that gimbal and shoot photos in vertical mode. Now if you guys want a little bit more detail about five things you're gonna want to know if you're looking at upgrading from the Mini 2 to the Mini 3, make sure you guys check out this video right over here. And if you're on the fence thinking about getting the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro, I have another video that you might wanna check out right over here. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. This is Alshon Anastasio with FlightPath.com. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.